Hello, Science 30. This lesson will be on, as it says here, electromagnetic radiation, or EMR. So we'll talk about what this radiation is. We'll get into some calculations. And then right toward the end, I'll talk about what is referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, which it does have a diagram of in your data book. So what is this radiation that we are talking about, electromagnetic radiation? Well, it is a form of energy, the transfer of energy in the form of a wave. So if I just kind of draw a wave, this is essentially what we're talking about with electromagnetic radiation. There are other familiar things probably to you that travel in the form of a wave. So if you think about waves in an ocean, those are waves. Uh, sound waves that travel um, at about 333 meters per second. Seismic waves. If there is an earthquake or a volcano, they can measure these mechanical seismic waves and they might travel at oh, between 10 and 15 uh, kilometers per second. I'm sure there's quite a range for that. What we're kind of focusing on though is uh, light. So sometimes all electromagnetic radiation is referred to as light, but truly light, visible light is just a very, very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And light along with all parts of this electromagnetic radiation, it travels at the same speed, at least in the vacuum. We're gonna come across this number again, but the number is 3.0 times 10 to the eight meters per second. In other words, much, 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 much faster than e any of the previous waves that I had mentioned here. <clears throat> so electromagnetic radiation, as the name kind of implies, it has an electrical component and it also has a magnetic component. And of course, we've already talked about electric fields and magnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation does involve both of these. So the picture that we're taking a look at here, what it is showing is these oscillating electric and magnetic fields. So in red, going horizontally, we have the electric field. And going exactly at right angles to it, perpendicular to it, is where we have the magnetic field that it's showing in blue. So if we want to look at this another way, if we do have the wave that's now going directly right at us, what we might see is the electric portion of it that's going this way. And if that's the case, at right angles to it, automatically there would have to be a magnetic field. We didn't do calculations for this, but this is the symbol for the magnetic field. So there's always the relationship between these. Whenever you have an electric field, you always have to have the magnetic field as well and they're always at right angles to each other. So not all light that you take a look at is going to have the electric field going horizontal and the magnetic field going vertical. In fact, it's going at all different angles. I'm just gonna grab a different color here. So light that's coming at you, coming from say an incandescent light or from the sun or from um, a fluorescent light, you might also have the electric field that's going like this on this angle, which means you would have to have a magnetic field that's going at this angle here. I'm just gonna grab one more color to do this one more time. So we might also have an electric field that's going at this angle here. And if that's the case, we would have a magnetic field that's going perpendicular to that. So what I'm drawing here with all of these different colors and all of these different angles that the light is traveling at, this is what is referred to as unpolarized light, where we do have all different possible orientations for both the electric and the magnetic field. We'll talk about this in another lesson, but we can also polarize that light and this is essentially going to be filtering out all of the other possibilities, except for only one particular angle. So if you do have, like it shows in this picture here, a polarizer or a polarizing filter, this one is arranged vertically. So in terms of my picture that I'm showing here, 
it might uh, filter out all of these ones here, except for the one that's going vertically. So again, there would be the perpendicular electric and magnetic fields, but it would be filtering out all of the other angles in the unpolarized and creating what is called the polarized light. But we'll see that again in another lesson. So what about the properties of waves? We can talk about a few different properties. So the picture that I have at the top here, it's showing the distance between successive points. So here we have, I'll just put C for crest, the next crest that we come across, the distance between those successive points, that is what we call the wavelength. And this is the symbol that we use for wavelength. This is given to you in your data booklet, so you don't need to remember that this is the symbol. It tells you this. It tells you in your data booklet that that is for wavelength, and it also tells you that the units are going to be in meters. It has on this picture here as well the amplitude. The symbol for amplitude is A. You don't have this in your data booklet because for science theory, you don't need to do any calculations for amplitude, but it is from the midpoint to either the top of the crest or the bottom of the trough. The picture at the bottom, um, it shows a wave as well, but this one obviously looks a little bit different. The wavelength is shorter, so different types of EMR do have different wavelengths. They do have different distances between the crests. So when you have a long distance between the wavelengths, that results in it taking longer to reach those successive points. So this is what we call the frequency. So how many times per second do you actually reach that crest? So if it's a long wavelength, the frequency would be low. And if it's a shorter wavelength, you can reach that crest much more frequently. So this would be a high frequency. <coughs> so the symbol for frequency, it's kind of a lower shaped F, but sometimes sort of a funny shaped F. That is for frequency. And we'll see, well, we'll actually see very shortly here. I said per second. So the units are per second, but we can write that a few different ways. We can write it um, a one over seconds. We can write it seconds to the negative one or the actual units that we usually talk about for frequency. They are the units of Hertz, which is abbreviated HZ. All right, so wavelength you need to know about frequency you need to know about. And I already mentioned how fast this light does travel at, and it travels at, well, the speed of light. So yes, all EMR travels at. This is a big number. And if you want to think about that in more sort of everyday numbers, a 300,000 kilometers per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. This is the speed of light at least it's the speed of light in a vacuum where there are no air molecules or anything else for it to interact with. It is given the symbol, a lowercase c, and that actually comes from the Latin word for uh, speed, which is a, a lowercase c that they use. So that's where that symbol does come from. So this again is in your data booklet. You don't need to remember it. 3.0 times 10 to the 8. They give you the number in meters, not kilometers. Meters per second is the speed of light and any kind of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, so we saw this one, yes, the wavelength, the distance between successive points, amplitude, don't worry, really worry too much about that. Uh, the period is the time it takes to go from one crest to the next. You won't have to do calculations with that. Uh, frequency you need to know, and this is where it's kind of that funny shaped F, and um, measured in units of hertz or per second or second to the negative one. So here I just wrote velocity as a V as well. So that's the speed that it's traveling at. And when we're talking about light in a vacuum, V is equal to C. And that is our 3.0 times 10 to, this should be superscripted here, of course, to the eight meters per second. This is the equation that is in your data booklet, the only equation that you need to know for electromagnetic radiation. So it says that V or C, same thing, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And that's the equation that we're gonna be using for a couple of calculations right here. So calculate the frequency. Let me remind you again of grasp, given, required. A stands for analysis. 
that's plugging your numbers in. S stands for solve. So you're coming up with the answer. And P is paraphrasing your answer that you do have. So what is our given information that we have here? Take a look at the numbers. We only have one number, so let's write that down. 2.0 times 10. This is a really, really, really small number. Meters. 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Meters are units for, well, are units for distance, but in terms of our calculations here, that's going to be the wavelength that we are given. Okay, so the wavelength is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So in other words, the distance between successive points, it is really, really, really small that we are talking about. We're asked to calculate the frequency. So that's going to be our require. That's what we're trying to find. Our frequency, that's what we don't know. So now if we go to the equation, so again, this was our equation here, and we are talking about EMR, so we can use C. So C is then equal to the frequency times the wavelength. <clears throat> so um, the C, remember that it's not given here, but it is actually a given because it's in your data booklet. So we do know that. That's the 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we already have C. We're not trying to figure out what that is. What we're trying to figure out is what is this. So we need to get the frequency on its own. We need to move the wavelength over to the other side. So if I just take this and divide it by the wavelength, then it's gone. But if I do that on the right-hand side, I need to do that on the left-hand side as well. So now we can see that our frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. <clears throat> so plugging the numbers in, again, plug all your numbers in with the units. And this is now the S part of GRASP. So speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Our wavelength is the 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10. And this is meters. So meters cancel out. We're left with per second, which is hertz. We are asked to calculate the frequency. So that is what we want. So that shows us that we set this equation up correctly. Again, in terms of estimating, we can take this 8, the exponent in the numerator, minus the exponent in the denominator. This is equal to 18. So what we should be expecting is that we are going to get an answer, which is something around 10 to the 18. That's our prediction. So when you actually do take this number and plug it into your calculator, it does work out to 1.5 times 10 to the 18, and the units are going to be hertz. <clears throat> so you might get a question, a numerical response question, and they might say, record your two-digit answer. And they might give you the box here, and then it might say 10 to the 18, times 10 to the 18. So you need to plug these numbers in. So a decimal, again, is not a digit. So you would write this as 1 decimal 5. Leave the last one blank if they're asking for a two-digit number. And that would be your correct answer, filling it in for numerical response. Let's take a look at one more here. So uh, Wi-Fi uses ultra high frequency electromagnetic waves and this here is the frequency so our frequency is equal to 2.4 what is this g it is giga and if you go to your data booklet it will tell you that giga is 10 to the 9 times 10 to the 9 so this is a very high frequency that we are talking about here. This is units of hertz that we are dealing with. Again, speed of light, we know that. It's 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We're asked to calculate the wavelength, symbol for wavelength. This is our equation. Speed of light is equal to frequency times the wavelength. We're trying to solve for this. Okay, I need to get 
frequency to the other side. It's as if both of these are over one. So another way to rearrange these, if it's on the top on one side, when you move it to the other side, it's at the bottom. So that means our wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So let's go ahead and plug the numbers in here. 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light. And then we're going to divide that by our frequency, which is the 2.4 times 10 to the 9 hertz or per second. So that's why these seconds are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with meters. And that's the unit that we do want when we're calculating the wavelength. So plug these numbers into your calculator. Again, we can do an estimate here, taking a look at these exponents. So 8 minus 9, we should end up with something like that's 10 to the negative 1, a little bit less than 1. And when you do plug the numbers in, yes, that is what you get is 0 0.125 meters. Or if you were asked to convert this into centimeters, then this would be 12.5 centimeters. Just a couple of other things about uh, frequency and wavelength. So signal modulation. So modulation means that we're changing something in the signal. So if we take a look at this basic one that we have here, if we take a look at the height of it, and if we take a look at the distance between the crests, then we can actually change that. So if we're changing the height, we're changing the amplitude, actually from the midpoint going up or down. So we can change that. And we can also change the distance between the crests. And of course, we just did calculations with that. And that is the wavelength. So if we take a look at the wave that we see in red here, the distance between the crests doesn't change at all. So this one here is the same. I'll just put F for the frequency. But what changes is the amplitude. Okay, the amplitude is going to differ. So what we have done is we have modified or modulated the amplitude. So here it's going to be much, much higher. And here it's going to be much, much smaller. The one at the bottom, our blue wave, now we can see that the wavelength is actually the same, or sorry, the amplitude rather, is the same. But what is different is now the frequency. Okay, it's not the same distance between the crests. So now we have a different frequency, and we have a different wavelength here as well. So we have modulated the frequency. So that is where the terms or the abbreviations AM and FM do come from. So AM, radio signal, FM, radio, FM signal. So what are we doing? So AM is amplitude is changing. Distance between the crests, it's exactly the same. Frequency is the same. Wavelength is the same. It is the amplitude that is changing. That is AM. That is amplitude modulation. So it carries a signal by changing the height or the amplitude of the wave. And usually it doesn't show it here, but usually these ones here, the wavelengths, they do end up uh, being longer than the other one, which is the FM. So we can see now that the amplitude is exactly the same for all of these. And what varies is the distance between the crests, so the wavelength, but also the frequency. If you change the wavelength, you also change the frequency. And that's why this is called frequency modulation. And in this case, the wavelengths, they usually end up being a little bit shorter. So I'll finish off with this one here, which shows the electromagnetic spectrum. It shows you a picture similar to this in your uh, data booklet. And I'll go to there in a minute to finish off this presentation. But what this does show is the spectrum that's starting off on the left-hand side. And if we take a look at the wave at the bottom, so on the left-hand side here, what we have are the very, very, very short wavelengths. They tell you that in your data book. If it's a short wavelength, we have a very, very high frequency. They tell you that in your data booklet. They don't tell you this. A higher frequency, shorter wavelength, means higher energy, much higher energy. Way at the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, we have much longer wavelengths. That goes along with a lower frequency, and this also means lower energy. 
So in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum, what it has in the middle here, this is usually what we consider light, because this is the only thing that we can actually see without the aid of some technology. So we can see all of the different colors of the rainbow, and the way that it has this oriented, it means that the purplish colors, those ones are the higher energy end compared to the reddish colors, which are the lower energy end. But there's also the electromagnetic spectrum that extends outside of the visible range for us, things that we can't actually see. So in this case, the further you go to the left, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, and the higher the energy. The further you go in the opposite direction, well, we get exactly the opposite. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, and the lower the energy as well. So this is why when you're out in the sun, you're supposed to put on a hat, sunscreen, sunglasses, because ultraviolet radiation is high energy radiation and it can damage your DNA. And that can lead to things like skin cancer by damaging your DNA. X-rays even more so, this is why when you go to the dentist, they usually only do one X-ray a year. And they're very careful with the amount of X-rays that you have done, whether it's for your teeth or whether it's for your bones or anything else. Gamma rays, also referred to as cosmic rays even more so, Fortunately, um, all of these are generated by the sun, by the way, but these are filtered out by our atmosphere. They don't reach us on Earth. Otherwise, well, we probably wouldn't be here and neither would other living organisms. So these are referred to as ionizing radiation. And that just means they're dangerous. They're dangerous because they're high in energy. If we go in the other direction, infrared is really just heat. It's heat energy. Microwaves, of course, we use them for heating up food, and that's because it gets these guys here, water molecules, jiggling around and moving, and that heats it up. And even less energetic are um, waves that we use for communication, like radio waves and TV waves. So that is the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, I'm going to show you the one in the data booklet as well, because it's oriented exactly the opposite. So what you do need to realize is that they can show the electromagnetic spectrum that has the high energy gamma rays at the left, as it shows here, or it can be at the right, or they could even show it vertically, where they might have the gamma rays up here, and they might have the radio waves down here. So just make sure that you're always taking a careful look at the way that they are presenting the information. And now we'll just go ahead and take a look at the one that's in your data booklet and see what that looks like. So this is on page three in your data booklet. And you can see here that this is where we do have the uh, wave equation. It's really the same equation, just showing the V or the C for the speed of light. And it tells you what V is. It is speed in meters per second. It tells you C is the speed of light in a vacuum. And it gives you that number. So again, you don't need to memorize that. 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second that tells you that the F is for frequency in hertz or per second and wavelength is uh, meters. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, most of the information they give to you here, so they give you the frequency. So the bigger the number, the higher the frequency, and that's the high energy gamma rays. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy and that is the high energy gamma. Rate. So again, what they don't tell you here is the energy. They give you the frequency, they give you the wavelength, but they don't give you the energy. So make sure you are able to read this table. So they might just say that you have a signal, which is a microwave signal, and what would be the frequency? And they might give you a number of different options, but all you need to do is take a look at the spectrum here, and it tells you what the frequency would be and the wavelength would be for microwave radiation. You can always double check your calculations as well. So if you're asked to do a calculation for ultraviolet light, then it should kind of fit into this range, 10 to the 15 to 10 to the 17, 10 to the 18. And if you're outside of that range, then maybe you did something wrong with your calculations. So you can most definitely use this for uh, double checking your work and making sure that you're on the right track. You're kidding me. <laughs>